I have never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. The laws of nature are written by the hand of the unseen and the language of mathematics. You can't teach anybody anything. Only make them realize the answers are already inside them. Knowing yourself, that is the greatest wisdom. Nothing occurs contrary to nature except the impossible. If you could see the earth illuminated when you were in a place as dark as night, it would look to you more splendid than the moon. You may force me to say what you wish. You may revile me for saying what I do, but it moves. Where the senses fail us, reason must step in. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same creator who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forgo their use. Nature is relentless and unchangeable, and it is indifferent as to whether its hidden reasons and actions are understandable to man or not. Two truths cannot contradict one another. Long experience has taught me this about the status of mankind with regards to matters requiring thought. The less people know and understand about them, the more positively they attempt to argue concerning them. While on the other hand, to know and understand a multitude of things renders humans cautious in passing judgment upon anything new. Philosophy is written in that great book, which ever lies before our eyes. I mean the universe. But we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols in which it is written. The vain presumption of understanding everything can have no other basis than never having understood anything. For anyone who had ever experienced just once the perfect understanding of one single thing, and had truly tasted how knowledge is accomplished, would recognize that of the infinity of other truths, he understands nothing. In the long run, my observations have convinced me that some men, reasoning preposterously, first establish some conclusion in their minds which, either because of its being their own or because of their having received it from some person who has their entire confidence, impresses them so deeply that one finds it impossible to ever get it out of their heads. God is known by nature, by the works of creation, and by doctrine in the revealed world. Surely God could have caused birds to fly with their bones made of solid gold, with their veins full of quicksilver, with their flesh heavier than lead, and with their wings exceedingly small. But he did not, and that ought to show something. It is only in order to shield your ignorance that you put the Lord at every turn to the refuge of a miracle. In the questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. Scripture is a book about going to heaven. It's not a book about how the heavens go.
All truths are easy to understand. Once they are discovered, the point is to discover them. Passion is the genesis of genius. The sun, with all those planets revolving around it and dependent on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. The number of people that can reason well is much smaller than those who can reason badly. If reasoning were like hauling rocks, then several reasoners might be better than one. But reasoning isn't like hauling rocks. It's like racing, where a single galloping Barbary steed easily outruns a hundred wagon-pulling horses. It is a beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. Nature does not act by means of many things when it can do so by means of few. In regards to philosophers, if they be true philosophers, i.e. lovers of truth, they should not be irritated that the earth moves. Rather, if they realize that they have held a false belief, they should thank those who have shown them the truth. And if their opinion stands firm that the earth doesn't move, they will have reason to boast then and be angered. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. See now the power of truth. The same experiment, which at first glance seemed to show one thing, when more carefully examined, assures us of the contrary. It is surely harmful to souls to make it a heresy to believe what is proved. To be humane, we must ever be ready to pronounce that wise, igneous, and modest statement, I do not know. They seemed to forget that the increase of known truths stimulates the investigation, establishment, and growth of the arts, not their demination or destruction. Measure what is measurable, and make measurable what is not so. In the future, there will be opened a gateway and a road to a large and excellent science into which minds more piercing than mine shall penetrate to the recesses still deeper. Who indeed will set bounds to human ingenuity? Who will assert that everything in the universe capable of being perceived is already discovered and known? And believe me, if I were again beginning my studies, I should follow the advice of Plato and start with mathematics. To me, a great ineptitude exists on the part of those who would have it that God made the universe more in proportion to the small capacity of their reason than to his immense, infinite power. I think that in the discussion of natural problems, we ought not to begin with the scriptures, but with experiments and demonstrations. To understand the universe, you must understand the language in which it is written, the language of mathematics.